like to remind everybody watching on TV, please come visit us at 1030 here in Edgerly at Antioch Baptist Church Sunday morning. It's going to be a short sermon today, more of a reminder than anything. We're going to begin in 1 Peter 5, 8. Let's all stand. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Father in heaven, please forgive us of our sins and make us pure that we could receive this holy word. Help us, Lord, to have our guard up and to be spiritually and physically careful every day because we have an enemy that wants to hurt us. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody be seated. You know, Jesus said to be sober and vigilant. That means pay attention to what you're doing. You know, there's thousands of people get killed every day, y'all. Car wrecks and different things and people are hunting and fall out of trees and just so many ways we can get injured for life or even killed. And you know, I go down the interstate and people pass me doing 80 and 90 miles an hour while they're texting and they're not even looking up. I see people putting on false eyelashes as they fly by. Hey, one time me and the wife was parked at a red light in downtown Lake Charles, and a lady, she was on the phone, and she come turning a curve, and when she's doing this, her hand started doing that, and her phone flew out of her hand, out of her window, and hit my car, and poor crazy thing, she got out in the middle of traffic and started picking up all the little components. I guess she was going to put it back together. <laughs> she just wasn't thinking, but that's how people get killed, folks. You know, here lately, I've been seeing more and more people go to these mountains like the Grand Canyon and fall off. Look, man, I don't want to get nowhere close to the edge of that thing. But they get right up on the edge and they fall off. Just the other day, I seen they had some guy, and he was one of these cliff climbers. And he was hanging on by two fingers on a thousand-foot drop trying to take a selfie. And the little thing crumbled. Ooh! 1,100 feet he went down. He looked like a bowl of jello with some things in it when he hit the ground. Folks, you can ask for it. You know that? You know, I used to be wild when I was a kid, and I told my daddy one time, I said, Daddy, you got to die sometime. And he said, but boy, you can go asking for it. And there's a lot of truth in that. We need to be careful nowadays. And it's like I tell my wife, it's not just you on that highway. You never know when somebody's going to come scooting across that medium there and just run right into you or run a red light and hit you, and you're in the right. And she said, well, I, I'm in the right, but you'll still be dead. <laughs> what difference does it make if you was in the right? But the devil is after us, y'all. He wants to snuff you out. And let's not help him. Let's be vigilant. Watch what you're doing. Be sober. Don't put your hair dryer by your bathtub or, or do something dumb like that. You know what I'm saying? How many of us have got burnt light in a barbecue pit? You know? I mean, we just need to be careful because he truly is a lion roaring. And what they mean by that when a lion is hunting, he walks along going, mm, uh, Oh, this is going to be delicious. Mm. That's what he's thinking. Well, we don't want to be on his menu, amen? So let's be careful. You know, and this is something for you and I to really, really think about. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, this know also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Folks, that's where we're at. You know, there was a time when you'd fall off your horse and break your neck or walk across the street and dodge sitting in a covered wagon and run over you. But now, folks, we're falling out of the sky in airplanes and twisted masses of burning metal. Nowadays, we're zooming up and down the highway night and day at 90 and 80 miles an hour. Today, there's so much peril. We've got diseases galore. And they tell me with this homeless epidemic in San Francisco, they've got bubonic plague sprouting its wings once again. Oh, man, that's a bad thing. We've got new forms of tuberculosis that medication won't fight. We've got Ebola virus. We've got AIDS. We've got so many deadly things nowadays. We need to be on our toes, y'all, because we're living in the last days, and there are perilous times. 
But you know, in Luke eleven four, 4, Jesus, he says a, a prayer. And he says, forgive us of our sins, for we also forgive everyone that indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Every day, every night, when you put your head on that pillow, you should say, Lord, please keep me from being tempted by the devil and deliver me from the evil that's out there in that world. You know, I've had so many close calls throughout my life accidentally pulling out in front of an 18-wheeler or something and just just miss you and you realize how close you came, you know. Now, I know over there in New Iberia, come sure cane season, man, you stop at every one of them stop signs and you make sure there's not a truck coming because they're trying to get that sugar cane to the, to the grinding place and they're wide open, man, and it mash you flat. Yeah, I tell you what, but every day we ought to get up and say, Lord, I'm fixing to get in my car and go to work. It's foggy, slippery, raining, icy, whatever. A road full of cuckoos. God protect me as I travel. We ought to always pray, keep us from evil. Galatians 1 4 says, talking about our Jesus, that he gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of our Father. You know something? God don't want you snuffed out. God wants you to live a good, fruitful life so when you go to heaven, you've got your full conditioning. You know, a lot of people don't make it through boot camp. They get susceptible to sinuses or something or allergies. Sometimes they'll break a knee. They don't get to finish boot camp, you know. Oh, they get to stay in the military, but it's going to be a desk job. But you know what? Most people want to be a full-fledged soldier. And I know in God's army, we want to be all that we can be for God. So we want to live a good, long, healthy life, learning, experiencing, and seeing things, avoiding evil. Live your full life to your full potential because that's what God wants you to do. The Bible says he came to give you eternal life, and he wants this one to be a good one as well. But, you know, I'll tell you, folks, 2 Timothy 4.18, just listen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. He will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. You know something? Again, God's preserving me. A lot of times I should have been snake bit, and the snake just didn't bite me. I remember snake bit Trav when we was kids, a big old snake. And it didn't hurt him at all. We got to the doctor, and the doctor said it. It must have just bit something and used all its poison or something because it didn't hurt him. It didn't let go neither. He took off running across the field with that big old cobra latched onto his arm. And when he run through a barbed wire fence, the snake didn't make the wire. But, uh, you know, we just thought he was a goner for sure. I remember when he was a real little little fellow, his brother was mean. We had a big old tractor with water in the tires. You know, you used to put water in the tires to make them heavy. <laughs> And Michael run right over his little belly. He wasn't no bigger than a Jackson Ike. Run right over his belly, man. I'll tell you what, God was with us when we were children. You might not realize it, but he was with us. There were so many times. I remember when I was six years old, my daddy was going down the highway, and I was dozing off in an old 39 Ford pickup truck. And the old man told me, he said, boy, roll up that window. And I was asleep, man. I opened the door and fell out on the highway. And the first thing hit the road was my forehead. Knocked me out colder than a frog, man. But again, God was always with us. And you know something? We need to thank God for that. Because how many times did you almost get killed and didn't even know it? You know, I think about that a lot. That you didn't even realize it. But God intervened and stepped you, stopped you from getting killed. And don't get me wrong, sometimes we're ready to go home. That's a different story. I'm talking about a premature departure on our stupidity or something like that. We must try to avoid that and live our lives to the fullest for God and give God the amen because he's preserving us every day and sometimes we don't even know it. You know, in Job 1.5, this is what I try to do for my family and you as well. 
I pray every day when I get up for everybody. At night when I go to bed, I pray for my children and all of you. And Job 1, 5, and it was so when the days of their feasting were come about that Job sent and sanctified them, his children. He rose up early in the morning, got up in the morning. It was the first thing he did. Listen what he did. And he offered a burnt offer according to the number of them all. You know, he was so serious about praying for his kids. He'd take a dove for each son, a dove for each daughter. Oh, he could have done it all with just one animal, but he didn't because he took his prayer for his loved ones serious. And he'd take and cut that little dove's head off. That's how they did it. The soul went back to God, and he'd pour that blood out on the mercy seat and say, God, I give you this life for my daughter's life. Please forgive them and protect them. Then he'd do another one. I do this for my son's life and for his sin. He was very conscious of his children. And you know, folks, we know that he got a special reward. We look at it as God cursed him. No, no. That ordeal he went through, you and I can't, that's beyond our realm of reasoning. But that was a great thing God done for, for old Job by plaguing him and taking his children because they got a place in heaven right now that we're going to be like at Christmas time, go ride by his house and look at it. You know what I mean? But I'm going to tell you something. Job prayed for his family every day. And, folks, it's so important you and I do that. We not only should pray for our mamas and daddies if they're still alive, and if they're not, thank God you had them for as long as you did. But we need to pray for our children and our grandchildren that God would protect them spiritually, physically, and mentally. And be sincere about your prayer. And never fail. Continue to do it every day. And God will bless them and protect them for your sake. You know, it's just like when the devil approached God about Job. You know, Job said, the devil said, Job's got all that stuff, and that's why he serves you. And God said, no. He served me before I gave him all them blessings. And the devil said something very peculiar. Well, I'm not going to fool with him because you and I both know you've got a hedge around him on every side. Well, you know what, folks? I want God to have that hedge on me on every side. You know, if you have any farm animals, even a dog, you put up a fence. If you got chickens and you don't have a fence, it won't be long before the neighborhood dog eats all your chickens. But not only that, your dog will go out in the road and get hit because he don't know no better. That fence works both ways. And I want God to put a hedge around me that not only keeps the booger man out, but keeps me in. Because I'm just a human. I might want to go somewhere that's dangerous and don't realize it. Or, or, or do something that I shouldn't do and get myself hurt, you know. I've got to watch my wife all the time because we go on vacation. She wants to get on these zip lines and, and all that. And I tell her, hey, look at them guys hooking that stuff up. Look at them good. You want to get on there knowing they put that together? I guarantee you could write their name and give it to them, and they wouldn't know what it was, you know? And here we are 100 foot off the ground. I'm not ziplining anything, you hear me? And I don't think anybody, if you're not in the military, anybody jumps out of a perfectly good running airplane, you got something wrong with you. I don't want to do that. I don't want to float down with a parachute. And if the motor quits or the plane's on fire, that's fine. But I'm not going to jump out of that airplane as long as it's running good and it's not burning. But I'm just saying that sometimes we take our lives for granted. And young people, when you start doing dope and stuff, you don't realize it, but you're playing Russian roulette with your whole body. And when we start abusing ourselves with alcohol and, and drugs and chemicals and things, we don't realize that we're hurting ourselves and we're driving ourselves to an early grave. That's what the devil wants you to do, to self-destruct. And we're not made to be self-destructive. We're made to be productive. Amen? Amen. But you know, <clears throat> he prayed for his family. And I'm going to tell you the attitude you and I should have. And I know we do lose loved ones continually. But we have to. That's God's program. But as long as I said, as long as it's in God's will, that's wonderful, whether we realize it or not. 
But we need to stop worrying about tomorrow. I know people that worry constantly, they're going to get cancer. I know people that are worried constantly, they're going to send a nuclear bomb over and incinerate us. Well, it might happen, but you worrying about it is not going to change a thing. And this Bible tells me in Romans 8, 31, what shall we say to these things? If God be for us, then who could be against us? And, you know, folks, it's so true. I can't stop them from sending a nuclear bomb over here, but I can be right with God when it gets here. And I think you and I, we need to draw close to God. Don't leave him out of nothing. You pray before you get up. You pray before you eat. You should pray before you take a drink of water. Everything we do, we ought to praise God for it. And you know, we'll sit down sometime with a piece of cheesecake, and you start eating that, and every so often you catch yourself going, mmm. Well, don't go, mmm. Go, thank you, Jesus. I've made it a habit to do that. Instead of saying, yummy, I say, thank you, God. We need to be grateful to him because, I tell you something, man, he is the provider. And we need to be close to God in everything we do. And don't be scared of diseases. Ask God to hedge you about. Don't be scared of bombs. Ask God to put a fence around you and your loved ones, and he'll do it. Here's the ticket right here in James 4, 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Folks, we need to start getting on one side or the other. We need to either be totally for God or, we, or we're not because you can't ride the fence when it comes to God. We've got to be all the way in for him. Don't be ashamed of God. Be a Christian with boldness. And like I said, don't be double-minded. I know this world, they shame Christians and they try to make Christians look dumb. They're the dumb ones because they're stumbling off in eternity without God into eternal hellfire. We've got a Lord that loves and protects and guides us. We're the smart ones, folks. Don't ever kid yourself. But we need to stop being double-minded and start having God on our mind. We reject God so many times, especially America nowadays. Just ride around and look how many towns don't have a nativity scene anymore. Look how many schools will not allow them to sing good songs like Silent Night. Oh, they can sing Jingle Bells and, you know, stuff like that. I even noticed on the radio, you know, now they want to put these these goofy love songs in there. Last Christmas I give you my heart. The very next day you gave it away. What's that got to do with Christmas? I turn that junk when it comes on my radio. I find, well, I like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, but hey, he's kind of part of it, you know. But you know, folks, we just need to get our minds right. We need to get right with God and stop being embarrassed to call it Christmas. You know, there's a story in the Bible about Jerusalem, how they got just like America. They wanted to remove God from everything. And they started having bad trouble, just like America. You know what? We didn't have the shootings in school but till we removed the prayer books and we removed praying every morning in school. And then we started having bad things happen. And, you know, Jesus told Jerusalem, he said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I want to take you and protect you like a mama chicken with her biddies. But you just won't do it. And I can't help you if you won't let me. Same goes for America. Same goes for me and you. And look, I'm going to read it to you. It's in Matthew 23, 37. Oh, Jerusalem. And that O oh means I'm so brokenhearted over you right now. Oh, America, America, thou that killest the prophets and stoneth them which sent thee, how often would I have gathered thy ch children together even as a hen gathereth her little chickens under her wings, and you would not. I'll tell you all this story because every time I read this verse, I think of this. I was talking to a missionary one time that went to Mexico after a bad fire. This was years ago. And everything was devastated. There was nothing left but just little plunks of grass and burnt stubble. And preachers were walking through the burnt debris. And he saw this hunk of it looked like burnt grass. And he just kicked it talk, while he was talking. He kicked it. And it wasn't grass at all. It was a, a, little, a, a little prairie chicken. It had burned to death. But when it rolled over, 
All these little bitties come out from under her wings. Mama died a horrible burning death to protect her little babies. But every one of them that was under the wing was saved by the fire. Now, you see, that's a, um, an act of love. That mama chicken that had to hurt something fierce, but she thought more of her babies than she did herself. And folks, Jesus dying on the cross, it's the same story. He thought so much more of you that he had to enable himself to give power to protect you. And today, if you don't trust him, you don't know what you're missing. Trust Jesus with your life. Show him you trust him. Pray every day to protect you and your loved ones, your life, your country. Our policemen and our soldiers that protect us so valiantly. Trust God enough to ask him, put your wings around me, Lord. Don't let the fire get me. And you can rest assured. He just said, I'd love to do it. Why aren't we doing that? But you know, I... I always like that little scenario, but I'm going to tell you something, folks, and you listen good. You can't use God. He don't play games. The Bible said he knows your heart. Yesterday I was watching some people, and they sat down to eat. It was a big religious family, and the guy had a bunch of daughters, and they just started eating like a bunch of pigs. The daddy said, hey, hold it a minute, and they stopped. He said, we're going to pray. Well, the majority of them, they bowed their head and had a big jaw, looked like a little chipmunk with a mouthful of acorns. They bowed their head and they prayed. But there was a couple of the little ones, they kept right on eating. Oh, Daddy ain't never said a word. If that had been mine, I'd have said, hey, this goes for you too. Don't you disrespect God by eating while we're praying. You don't see a whole lot of that anymore. You don't see a lot of people that even pray anymore. But folks, I want to tell you something. You can't use God. Amen. There's a time going to come when we're going to be scrapping for food. But I believe with all my heart, those that pray and thank God, I don't think they'll see a hungry day. Today we've got people that waste food. They waste food. It's a tragedy. And I think one day they're going to see what it's like to be hungry. We should appreciate the food, the water, and the air we breathe. And we ought to be humble and thank God for it. But God is not mocked. And I want to read to you Galatians 6, 7. Be not deceived. Don't kid yourself. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that's what he's going to reap. Folks, you know something? The people that come to church every time the doors are open, you think God don't see that? He, he notes it. And whenever something happens to you, he says, oh, that's the one that's in church every Sunday. Well, sure, I'm going to help them. They depend on me. And he's not going to let you down. If you depend on God, he will never let you down. I believe that. But you can't use God. People get healed and they forget all about who he is. I know people that want to buy a new car. Well, they'll go to church for two or three Sundays till they get their new car and they never go back. Man, God's not an idiot. God's not a fool. You love God. You serve God. And you praise God all the time. And when you need him, he'll be there for you. Amen. But make sure you don't try to pull the wool over God's eyes. Because this will happen. Listen to this in Proverbs 128. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early. That they shall not find me. You know, you got a bad problem. You old minute you do, you get up and you pray. Well, whoa, whoa. Where was you at the last year? You didn't think about God. Now you got a problem. Talking about a layoff on a job and now you want to pray. Folks, it don't work that way. You stay prayed up. You stay like this with God. Don't wait till you have a tragedy to expect God to come running. No, you already be there with him. Be by his side. It's so important. But you know, y'all, I believe that America has been weakened. And one reason is because of our families. If you notice, there's so many families, they don't sit down and have supper together no more. Used to, mom and dad and the kids all sat down at the table together. 
So they knew where that blessing came from. Now the son's in there on a video game. The daughter's watching TV. Daddy's reading the newspaper. And mama's griping because the house is dirty. They're all kind of, you know. And that's a shame, folks. Because our family unit is what makes us strong. And you know something? Old Joshua, he had it right. This is how he said it in 2415. If it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, well, then you need to choose this day whom you're going to serve. Whether the pagan gods which your father served, which were on the other side of the flood and drowned. I'm adding this. I'm, I'm just finishing these for you. Or the, the pagan gods of the Amorites in whose land you took from them when we slaughtered them all. But listen, here's the line I'm going for. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And I think that everybody ought to have that pledge, and we ought to all say that, and we ought to mean it. I don't know what my neighbor's going to do, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve God under this roof. And if you're going to live in my house, you're going to respect God, and we're going to pray, and we're going to eat at the same time, and we're going to have a family unit, because that's how God intends it. And we've lost a lot of strength in our country because of that. Nowadays, you watch commercials and well, they try their best to make single households, and it's just, it's not right. But you know what? I'm not afraid, and I can honestly stand here and tell you that. I don't want to die, and I do kind of worry about how I might die. I wouldn't want to burn to death in a car with the door locked or something like that, and people do. But I'm not afraid to die because I know where I'm going. And that's why this verse is here in Hebrews 13, 6. So that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. I don't fear what disease that they're going to bring next. I don't fear the bombs that might be lobbed. I fear God. And I live for Him, and I trust in Him. And so far, He's done a pretty good job of protecting me and you know folks I know sometimes we get ourselves in trouble or maybe you're eat up with a disease and you say it's too late for me to, pre to pray or it's too late for God to hear me now it's never too late folks as long as you've got breath in your, in your lungs I think, about, I think about Jonah Jonah was in the Mediterranean Sea 14,000 feet deep Oh, boy, that's a deep swimming hole. He was thrown out of a boat, and he was swallowed by a gigantic whale. Now, when you're in the belly of a whale, pitch black dark, acid burning your skin off, old rotten tunas floating around your nose, you pretty much can say your goose is cooked, huh? But you know what? Jonah had so much faith in God. He said, I know I'm as good as dead. But I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to pray anyhow. A powerful thing. Jonah 2 2. And I said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. When he says the belly of hell, that Hebrew word for hell right there means the grave. That one means the grave. He said, I was in my grave being digested. But I thought to myself, I'm not dead yet. And in the Bible, it actually says in the next verse, I felt my life leaving my body. And I started to faint, started to pass out. But before I did with my last thought, I said, Jesus, not Jesus, because he didn't have that name then, but it was Jesus. He said, Lord, I know I didn't listen and I disobeyed. Out of the belly of hell, I'm begging you, please get me out of this affliction. And that whale swam up to the bank, puked that man out, and he got up alive. And I'm sure he went and rinsed himself off and went and done the work of the Lord. Folks, it don't matter how far gone you are, don't give up on praying. And you know, like I said, the Bible plainly says God giveth and God taketh away. We can't stop that. Sometime God is gracious and we can postpone it. I have noticed in my life 
A lot of times we postpone death of a loved one and they live three or four more years in misery and sickness because we're selfish and won't let them go. I have seen that. But you know something? This is what you and I need to start today practicing on doing. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. If you and I start looking at the facts and figures, it'll scare us to death. Lean on God with all of your heart. Believe in him with your heart, not with the facts of life. We've got scientists and biologists working 24 hours a day to prove there's no God. We've got teachers in school that are devoted to proving that we, our origin come from monkeys and not from God. And folks, it's a sad, sad thing. You trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Don't lead on facts and figures and because, you know what, years ago we had a lot of scientific facts, but if you look in the school books now, they're not facts anymore. But you know something? Listen to what this says in Psalm 6410. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. You know something, folks? I want to be glad. I don't want to go through life all misery and, and full of negativity and, and de de depression and sorrow. If you give in your trust to God, you're going to be glad. You're going to appreciate God. But you know what first you got to do? You got to get saved. Because that's the first thing you need to trust in the Lord is ask Him to save your soul. And then you have a relationship with Him and you become a sheep of His pasture. And he can protect you. And you know what? I know today they're talking about Kim Jong-un and all his little bombs we bought and paid for in the past. Oh, I know we've got Iran and they've got nuclear stuff that we bought and paid for for him. And they hate us. But you know what? Listen what Psalm says. 112, verse 7. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. Trusting in the Lord. You know something? I ain't afraid of hell anymore because my heart is fixed. And I've trusted in the Lord. He saved me. And if I have to leave this world, I know where my next de destination is at. And folks, I don't worry about things because I'm trusting in the Lord. Even though I hear about evil tidings coming, every day you hear about an evil tiding. But trust in the Lord and he'll get you through it. Today, if you've never been saved, I'm fixing to have an invitation. Please come up here and pray with me, and I'll show you how to be saved. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the truth of your word. Thank you for the warnings and the blessings that we get from you. Today, we just ask that you would help us to be more alert and vigil. Father, protect us from the devil and the harms of this world. Let our lives truly be full of gladness prosperity and victory we love you lord and we thank you for what you mean to us and we thank you that you will save all that call upon your name for it's in jesus name we pray amen